Let's take a look at a fuel injector tester and indeed a fuel injector. This is a device that's used in vehicle engines and you've basically got a high pressure fuel inlet at this end and a small filter. And then you've got a very fine nozzle at this end that puts out a spray like an aerosol. And inside is a solenoid valve. And if I hook this up to a power supply and give it a jab, you'll hear it clicking. I'm not going to hold it up to the microphone again like I did in the previous video when it really made distorted pops. But anyway, it's going to click. Hopefully you can hear it clicking. And in operation, it just, uh, basically speaking, when it needs fuel in that cylinder, it just gives it a short pulse and it sprays a, a controlled portion of fuel in. This little tester is designed for testing them. Comes with instructions in glorious, full page Chinese, and also in English. Makes me think this is probably used a lot in Chinese garages. Now, I thought this was going to be super simple. It should be super simple. But something weird happened. I shall connect this up. And initially, when I got this, I connected it to a 12 volt supply and it didn't trigger the, uh, the fuel injector. Oh, incidentally, for technical reference, the fuel injector coil is about 15 ohms impedance or resistance and it draws about 800 milliamps at 12 volts. Let me bring in the power supply here, set to just above 12 volts, because it doesn't work if you put it to 12 volts. That caught me out. It just didn't work at all. It lit the little LED and looked as though it was controlling the unit, but the unit wasn't triggering. But now I've done that, uh, that's, uh, that sleeve has fallen off there again. Now I've hooked that up. You choose the mode you want. The first mode, I'll zoom down this. Just a little bit. The first mode fires a single pulse. The LED lights, you can hear that click. The second mode, and you'd think you could just work through the modes, but no, you have to press reset every time you start from scratch. The software is extremely primitive. Uh, the next does a sequence of pulses. Then the next mode, one, two, three, does a longer sequence of shorter pulses. And then the next mode pulses it continually at a low speed. Okay, so now we've seen it working. Well, we've not seen it working. I've not shown you it spraying liquid out. Um, that would involve an adapter and a high pressure source of liquid. Well, aerosol would work. You could make an aerosol automated air freshener out of this if you could get an adapter. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to adapt that to the inside core. It's got uh, the manifold that pushes into the high pressure fuel manifold has a, an outer o ring here for fitting on. Okay, let's pop it open. Four screws in the back. And what will it reveal? So there's the incoming supply. So there's a what looks like a polarity protection diode, uh, a 78L05, which is the 5 volt supply probably for the microcontroller. There's a display, possibly just a single resistor for the whole display, but it would have been nice to have one resistor per LED. There may actually be a resistor per LED, that's good. But very simple to drive that single uh, digit display. Uh, that's probably the MOSFET for switching the output here. And then there's a 78M05, which is a 5 volt regulator, which is odd. Right, tell you what, uh, that's probably priority the back EMF protection diode. I'm just going to reverse engineer this. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. This thing was full of so many surprises that I had to crack out an oscilloscope, just a simple little single channel oscilloscope, just to monitor the output waveform to answer some questions. That oscilloscope bit is at the end of the video and uh, it did answer the questions. Let's zoom down on this image a little bit, not too much, and explore it. So what do we have here? We've got the supply come in and the positive goes via the priority protection diode. It goes to this small 78L05 regulator that powers the microcontroller, but there's some 
odd circuitry, there's a transistor here that can turn that microcontroller on and off. Then the, five volt, the uh, incoming supply goes over to the next 5-volt regulator, 70MO5, but it's not always being used to regulate at 5 volts. It's also majorly current limiting by the look of it. It's certainly causing a significant voltage drop. It's making me wonder if that was a great choice for this, but it is what they used. And that uh, has its negative connection, the ground zero volt, whatever you want to call it, connection that would normally be just tied to the zero volt rail. It has it sitting on top of a Zener diode. It says 6.8 volt here. If that's the case, it would be, I wonder if that is 6.8 volt. wonder if that's why it was capping the voltage. That'd be interesting to see if it's just been dropped across that. But um, the regulator can either sit on top of that Zener diode, which raises the 5 volts above that level, giving theoretically about 12 volts. But when this transistor turns on and it shunts that out, it then ties the 0 volt of the rail of the regulator down to actual 0 volts, and then it just puts out 5 volts. And it looks, by the oscilloscope trace, as if that's to cut the power dissipation from the coil by initially start at higher voltage and then dropping the voltage. Don't know if it's really needed, but they did it that way. The variable voltage is fed down to one end of the injector coil and the other end is switched via this MOSFET. Now it does say MJD127G, which I believe may be a PNP Darlington, which would be a completely unsuitable transistor for this location, but they've used a MOSFET, which is a much more suitable one. And uh, there is that uh, clamp diode across the coil for shunting the back AMF spec. It's a freewheelish type diode. The display, the seven sync display, just uses seven segments. It's got a common negative, uh, and then it's got seven resistors. One big one over here just to jump tracks, although to be honest, they didn't really need to do that. They could have routed the tracks differently for this. I'm not sure why they did it that way because uh, there's plenty of pins in the microcontroller, and uh, it's just unusual they did it that way. They didn't need that, but but they did. There's lots of things about this that make me think it's got stolen software in it that they've just repurposed, particularly it seems quite old-fashioned the way it does things. Okay, bring in the schematic for exploration. Here's the schematic, and we'll zoom in a little bit more and see if I can do it in a controlled manner this time. We have the incoming supply going through the diode to create a roughly 12-ish volt rail. Uh, that goes to the 5 volt regulator, which powers the microcontroller via this transistor. The transistor is a PNP transistor, so it's switching to the positive rail, and to turn it on, you pull it down to the 0 volt rail. And in this case, they've used a 1K resistor to pull that down to keep it turned on. But when you press the reset button to get out of the mode you're in, which is the software is just bizarrely primitive. When you press that, it puts a 100 ohm resistor from there up to the uh, 5 volt rail, and that effectively turns that transistor off, and that turns the whole processor off. When the processor is turned on, though, initially this capacitor will charge up via this resistor, meaning it starts off around about 0 volts, and it charges up to 5. That's the reset input, and that just basically provides a clean reset. There's an oscillator pin being used with an external resistor. The data sheet for this chip doesn't show this capacitor. They've added that for some reason, but uh, it just shows a resistor to the zero volt rail for fixing a speed, and that's a 75k resistor. They've just chosen it for the timing. It makes me think this could have used a PIC microcontroller type thing with built-in oscillator, but they didn't do that. It could have also used one with the built-in reset circuitry and it does have a watchdog. Um, that's one thing in its favour. A watchdog is a counter and timer inside the microcontroller that at the beginning of each loop of your software, you just reset it. And what happens is that if the software is running normally, it just keeps resetting it back to zero. But if the software locks up in any way and doesn't get back to the start of the loop, it means that time will time out because it's not been reset and it will reset the processor and reboot it. There is the 7 cent display connected to the 0 volt rail with the 7 resistors. I've just drawn one for clarity. Two buttons to the 0 volt rail for the mode selection, mode set and pulse. So strange. They shouldn't even need the reset. They should just need mode and you should be able to just switch through mode at any time. It would not have been hard to implement. Uh, moving on 
to the weird circuitry for driving the injector, the injector coloured orange here. It's a bit of a cramped drawing with lots of jumping about here, just because it is a complicated circuit. The supply comes to the 5 volt regulator, has a decoupling capacitor there and one in the output to the its 0 volt reference. But that normally sits on this Zener diode, and that lifts that up. So the output of that 5 volt regulator is 5 volts plus the voltage across that Zener diode. That supplies power to one end of the uh, injector. The injector has the diode across it for the shunting the vacuum F spike, and there is the MOSFET uh, switched by that 2K resistor to the zero volt rail. Uh, there is the LED and a 510 ohm resistor. That's the little green LED under there. And uh, it is powered from straight from the 12 volt rail just to zero volts via the uh, MOSFET. So whenever that turns on, regardless of the voltage there, it's just going to light that LED at the same intensity. That is more or less it. So what's actually happening in this situation is that the, it turns out that this MOSFET is being turned on while this transistor is turned off, and that gives that extra voltage boost. So the coil is initially brought in with a sort of spike of higher voltage, and then just after that, a very short time after that, this transistor turns on and it shunts this MOSFET, and that uh, then takes the 5 volt regulator down to the 0 volt rail, and that then just puts out the 5 volts, and that will reduce the dissipation across that. But the best way to show you this is to show you it with the oscilloscope. One moment, please. The experiment is set up, and we do have our answer. Instead of using the injector, I've used a more convenient load, a 10 ohm resistor with the clips on it, and even running in mode 4, it's, uh, which is continuous, it's not getting too hot for, I th think this is a 1 watt carbon film resistor. And if I dim the lights and take the exposure off, so we can actually see the display here, and I'll zoom down it, that would be a good idea too. So here is the display. Uh, we're seeing that it actually goes up to 8 volts. It doesn't go up to the full 12 volts. That voltage it goes to depends on the load, but even open circuit, it only went to 10 volts. There's a significant voltage drop across the circuitry in this unit over here. But it goes, in the case of having a decent load connected, it go goes up to 8 volts initially to, in the case of the injector, to give the coil a good boost to start the magnetic attraction of the core. And then just after that, it activates the auxiliary transistor that bypasses the Zener diode and uh, shunts the ground connection of the 78MO5 regulator to the 0 volt rail, and that drops it down to 5 volts. So that is what it's doing. So watch your eyes, the light is about to come back. The light is back. That answers the question, what a strange thing. Do actual car systems, fuel control systems, do that as well? Do they switch between the two voltages? I would have thought it would just be providing it very distinct length pulses. Did they feel that they had to do that for lowering dissipation? Maybe some do that, maybe some don't. I'm not really sure. The true aficionado mechanics, the experts, may actually know more about this than me. Uh, Eric O comes to mind with all his oscilloscopes. That would have been interesting um, to see what he thought of that. But there we go. That's an interesting unit. The circuitry is much more complex, but also weirder than I was expecting, particularly that reset mode um, that uh, basically just shuts the processor off and starts it again. But there we have it. The more complicated than expected and strangely hobbled as well, um, cheap eBay fuel injector tester.